B and welcome to the Circle of Vega. I'm Lady Amaris. Well, I have a coup here today. I have um, some paranormal investigators. We have Tiger and we have Sheriff. Now, ladies, calm your loins. I've <laughs> been told that women will be flocking after seeing this man. So just relax, form a line to the left, and everyone will be... Uh, will be fine. Okay, so we've got TNT Paranormal Investigations, so it's really, really exciting because I get a chance to see some equipment in action and some orbs and, you know, all that uh, sexy, sexy ghost stuff that everyone's uh, into at the moment. So I've got a couple of questions and hopefully I will be able to find out from the experts all about this, um, this ghost stuff. So how long have you been doing all of this professionally? Anyone's fine? Um. Personally, probably for about three years, been interested in it and also forming a team as well. That's a big passion of mine as well, it's all been interested in the paranormal. That's the way far away. Don't you just hate when that happens? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's life. Yeah. 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 Basically, just always been interested in it. And I mean, mainly I was interested in um, aliens and UFOs and that when I was younger and I was really into that. And then in the UK there was a TV show called Ghost Hunter, which was the first really that I saw paranormal investigating as such. And I just thought, wow, that's amazing. I got really hooked on it. And when I actually moved from Scotland to Australia, I became um, more involved in it and basically joined the paranormal team. And then that's where I met Lisa as well. She joined us in. Team later, so <laughs> she um, she joined the team later on, and basically we didn't like where that team was going, and we had better ideas and things to do more ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we decided to start up TNT Paranormal. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. That was it. Cool. So um, I know that you use equipment, and you also you've got uh, the psychic abilities. So yes. when you um, go into a, a place, you like, sweep it out with your... With your usually, usually pick it up pretty quickly when you walk into a place. Uh, usually prepare beforehand, or as I call it, turn that switch on mm. before I walk into a, a, you know, a house or a business. We're kind of picking up straight away as soon as we walk in. We will usually do a little walk around as well, mm -hmm. and then we'll set the equipment up and we're continuously trying to communicate as well on mm -hmm. a psychic or medium, you know, yeah. mediumship level. Yeah. And then what we basically do is use the equipment then to verify what we're actually picking mm -hmm. up. Because even though we can pick it up, we prefer the equipment for them to manipulate it. Mm -hmm. And then slowly but surely, we'll put all the jigsaw pieces together. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear Dave using, say, a spirit box where these words come in through. Mm -hmm. He'll shout the words out. We've also got a piece of equipment called the Ovulus that will shout out uh, words randomly. And they usually have... How would you say, usually whatever's happening within that little bit of a session, those words tend to uh, correspond with what energy we're actually picking mm -hmm. up at the time. Mm -hmm. So we've got that, then we've got spirit box, uh, not spirit box, sorry, the, you're better with the equipment. K2, which um, measures the electronic magnetic field. Mm -hmm. See that spirits um, give off basically like an energy mm -hmm. and uh, electronic magnetic field can detect it in so we measure it so when we go to a location we do what we call base readings first so we'll go and we'll take the temperature we'll take and um, see if there's any emf high emf in the room and um, record that <clears throat> basically make sure there's nothing in that room could contaminate our evidence such as airplanes flying <laughs> um, we can't do much about planes but um, apart from talk a bit louder <laughs> and um, Basically, that's the main thing that we do. We'll write all that down. So during the investigation, if we get a change in the equipment, i.e. the electronic magnetic fields higher, we know that earlier on it was, say, 1.5 millivolts. Oh, now it's gone up to 3, 4, 5 or more. And then, oh, the temperature's dropped. It was 19 degrees. And all of a sudden, with us just sitting, it's dropped right down to 15, 14. So we record all that as well. All right, some people say, can't say that's paranormal, but it is significant. 
mm. for temperatures to drop and then all of a sudden come back up again. And sometimes we can ask and say, can yes. you make the room colder? Can you make mm. it and try to get a response and also record it on the mm. equipment as well. But I mean, cameras, we have uh, infrared cameras with lights which are just normal like digital cameras but they've been converted mm. from English. Because that's the main thing people want. Any ghost hunter or paranormal investigator, the main thing you want is um, video evidence. Yeah, because right. obviously you're audio, going to be yeah. able to sense and know things are happening, mm. but it's almost yes. like you have to tell someone else that filter. But if you've got the, you know, people, people are conditioned now that if it's not, if it's not on a readout, then it's not real. So exactly, that, yeah. um, and that's what we're trying to do is link them both together and use little jigsaw pieces to put the whole puzzle together. Yeah. So, so it kind of, in a way, confirms the conventional people yeah, that what I'm doing. It's just a big jigsaw at the end of the day because, it I mean, is. for instance, um, Tiger mentioned the ovulus before, it has a 2,000 word dictionary in it. Mm -hmm. And basically they say that spirit can manipulate this um, box and choose words or words that sound like what they want yeah, to say. Yeah, a big dictionary. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we yeah. Had, did an investigation at a location where we were getting Jim and Murphy coming through constantly. Oh. The yeah. whole night it was like, you know, like we couldn't understand where it was coming from. But we just basically kept it in mind. We went down to the cellar. In the bottom of the cellar, we were just the way to pack up and leave at the end of the night, were yeah. we? And we turned the torch on and on the wall was written Jim Murphy, 1914. Oh. Somebody had actually written it on the yeah. wall and we had no idea. And this ovulus had said it the whole night. Something like that, the horse is brilliant because you captured it saying Jim and Murphy constantly. And then to have the actual video and the photograph of that mm. on the wall at the end of the night's great. Yeah, because well, sometimes, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah, mm. sometimes the words have come out of kind of random mm. words yeah. and don't seem to fit in, and other times they've got a big relevance mm. to mm. what we're actually, you know, putting together and who we're talking to, mm. which it blows us away each and every time. Mm. Doesn't matter how many times we do this, it blows us away. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It's never the same. It isn't, <laughs> is it? No. So, so a normal night <laughs> would obviously would be. Um, would you? Is there certain things that you usually get all the time, or is it always different? It can. It can be different. What we're tending to find a lot at this moment in time is. Somebody will call us and say they've had things moving in their house or it feels haunted. We turn up, we do a little bit of an investigation. Whatever is there that is actually causing that haunting tends to stand back then and then family members come through. Mm. And it's as if they've got messages to pass through that's relevant to the family's life that they're going through at the moment. So finding that a lot lately. Yeah. Almost like the, the um a little flag to say, um, come on, come on down. So we've got, we've got yeah. people to yes, they want to speak to you, but there's yeah. no way that you can actually communicate that. But yeah. they're kind of like the, I don't know, just say the postman that yeah. comes out. And, and <laughs> it literally is. Yeah. 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 It makes them contact pe yeah. you know people in paranormal yeah. groups, yeah. and then, like you <laughs> say, they just stand back. Mm. Mm. So, um, so when you're um, going to a place, do you find that it's Usually the places um, are, um, say, like, I know you were talking before on camera about there was a vortex in a certain area or it's um, a lot of places on certain ley lines that you seem to find more manifestations happen or... It can vary. It, vary. it definitely varies. You've got at the moment a lot of new houses going up on old land mm. and a lot of it's Aboriginal land yes. because obviously Aboriginals, you know, kind of lived here all those years ago. I think the disturbance of the land while the houses are being built are actually bringing more energies forward. Mm -hmm. So as for ley lines, uh, I've never wor really worked with ley lines. I tend to just go into a place mm -hmm. and feel the energies yes. or hear or see. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm just thinking whether it's ley lines seem to almost um, converge, not converge, but seem to attract that sort of energy, whether you find it that there's more on there than, than say, in other it, areas? It can do, but that's a more scientific mm. side to, yeah. you know, to what we do. Mm. Uh, we go in blind to a lot of the houses that we're going to as well. Mm. So we don't like any information, even if it's a historical site, historical building. We don't like to know any information beforehand. Yeah, you don't want to. No, definitely not. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
um, have you found that um, some places that people say, oh, there's stuff happening, but it's not actually um, anything paranormal, it's more to do with, say, um, flames or, you know, the actual electrical interference or yeah, how are you being yes. intra, yeah. what's it called, intra, 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 I can give you an example then. Actually, I followed a house once and there was a report in one room that the wardrobe door kept opening and it was one of the mirrored wardrobes. And the first thing we did was took a spirit level out, put it down on the floor. <laughs> and actually, when the door opened back the way, the bubble was down that way, the spirit level, so it wasn't level. Mm. So actually, if you pulled the, the, draw, the wardrobe down and you just you touched a wee finger or walked past me, you the door would just yeah. open. The other things that got some people think, oh, it's a ghost straight away, you know. What we tend to do, we go in and invent a place, Boy, and our first thing is to try and debunk. Yes, because, because yeah. you've got, got to approach to it that way first of all. So, I mean, that, to us, that's more important than anything. Mm -hmm. And we're not meaning to hurt anybody's feelings who say, oh, I've got ghosts in my house. Mm -hmm. We actually say to them, well, we have to look at this, and then when we can't explain it, hopefully mm -hmm. we try and capture something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people call us and think, oh, I think I'm going mad, I think I'm hearing things in my house and stuff like yeah. that, you know. And it's reassuring when we go back and say, no, you're not crazy because look, you've got this, you've got yeah. this. Yeah. Voice. I mean, we get a lot of um, mm -hmm. EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, mm -hmm. just from a little digital recorder. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can ask questions and we don't hear anything We don't at the time. hear anything at the time, but and then, then we, we listen back. back. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, has anything freaked you out when you've gone to a place? Like, you don't need a few TVs. Once. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Before you tell the story. Man. Um, I, was at, I was at a location, I can't actually say where it was, but um, for some reason we turned up and there was, a, there was an old house, an abandoned house, and we went through. And normally when, we, when you're paranormal investigating, you come across an old property that's abandoned. You go in each room and just just like explore it. You would do it in the cage, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anybody just to be nosy. Yeah. But for some reason, as a team, we all just went through the building. For some reason, we were drawn out to the back, the back room, and we were standing there. And you actually felt the energy completely change. It was really, really scary. The equipment was going off the scale, and I've never seen it in all the years I've been investigating gold play, what we call the red on mm. the EMF meters, mm. and it would stay red. And then you would feel the horror of me, and then I was physically poked in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. I really felt it. And it was horrible. And I got such a fright. First of all, I thought it was one of the team members that caught me with something, but it's actually on camera. And you, see, and you can see the colour drain out of my face. <laughs> and then we were like, we need to leave here now, just because it changed so much. And when we left, we came through the house and through the, the kitchen area, we could smell only what we could describe as rotten and burnt flesh, which, which is normally kind of a demonic kind of thing, I think. And it was horrible, it was that intense. By the time I got out to the driveway of the house, I was actually physically being sick. Mm. And then I jumped in my car, and the other team member jumped in their car, and we first out, and one of them had a GoPro camera on the dashboard, that actually caught a black figure come over the top of the house, came down on the ground, morphed into like a human figure, and then walked a few steps forward and then morphed into all I can describe as some kind of animal mm. and started running. But, and I was trying to think at the time when we reviewed the footage why I was running, but if I remember right, I was in my car driving away. Mm. So we think we were actually being chased off the property by mm. something. Mm. And um, I would say that was one of the scariest mm. things. And then you went to another location. Yeah, and you left two women in yeah, here while I, you <laughs> ran first through the door. Because it was exactly... <laughs> Big tough man. <laughs> Screaming and running like the always out that door. When you're a paranormal ladies. investigator, you should always wear runners. <laughs> <laughs> Not boots. <laughs> Runners, you can run past. <laughs> um, but time, this yeah. this other location that we are had a connection to the what I call spooky film. Mm -hmm. um, and when we were sitting there, the energy changed again. Oh, it and changed I felt it, and I felt time. exactly the same as what I did. So I was trying to warn the ladies to say we have to go, but mm -hmm. they didn't listen. So I went first, we did listen. just we to clear the way. So. Yeah, well, I 
I went first to clear the way. Uh, I have no idea. Sure what, there was no yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea what they were doing. They must have been putting a lippy on or something before we left. And before I knew it, I was outside and they weren't there. But I knew they'd be on. Because I could still hear them. No, that was a big energy build-up. Yeah. Not a lot frightens us. Mm. But definitely, yeah, no, yeah, not a lot does. But I've never been back to mm. that place. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'd love to go back. Mm. Yeah. That's, was... that's a strange thing I would love not to go and confront as such, but to try and learn a bit more. Yeah, to yeah. understand it more. We were driving home one particular night after doing another investigation and we drove past that particular area. Yeah. It's raining, quite a dark night, a bit foggy, and all of a sudden, in front of us, all I can describe as see-through was the figure of somebody downwards, you know, from the sun and the legs. Yes. Or crossed over in front of us. You just want to go That's the passenger, the passenger bridge. Bridge. I'm driving. And I'm thinking, is that going to stop it? That's not real. Yeah. And we yeah. both kind of looked at it. We were like, did you see that? We went, yeah, we went. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So when it comes to that sort of thing, when you're going into a place, um, I know that um, as, a, as a witch, a lot of the times you want to make sure that you, you're protected. So yes. do you protect yourself on a psychic level when you go into a... We do. I always ask for protection. I presume that we all do it as an individual as well as when we're together. Mm. Mm. Uh, obviously, all our belief systems are different. Yeah. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. So I always ask for protection mm. uh, of my guardian angels beforehand. And I also ask for spirit to come and communicate mm -hmm. with us mm. as well wherever we're going. Yeah, I think that's a big important thing that you be polite and ask. You have yeah. to Because it's you nothing like do. bursting into somebody's house and yeah. trying yeah, to like, Oi, talk to me. That's effectively what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it really. is. On, on, and that's on why sometimes you do get hard. an EVP saying, get out. Yeah, yes. places, get yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, because you've just barged yeah. into their house. Yeah. And well, we're, we're, literally, house, we're yeah. literally meeting each other in the middle. Mm. So we've got to be respectful of them. We also ask them to be respectful of us. Mm. Through the spirit box and psychically, we get quite a few yeah. swear words coming through if somebody doesn't want us to be there. I'd I think say sometimes within, they try to put you off to them. They do, but within about half an hour, an hour, they start they trusting. Sense, yeah. mm. And they actually settle back down and start communicating mm. quite openly then. Mm. I mean, so I can fully understand mm. that initially they're not going to trust us. Mm. I mean, we've noticed. They yeah, don't know us. We have like an energy that we build up where we kind of, Mm. We, are, we take it very serious what we do, but we still like to have a laugh. Oh, we, yes. But sometimes we find when we're having a laugh and giggling, that's when the energy, energy increases brilliant. sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, we've done that loads Would of you times, say that's because the energy of, of laughter and happiness is quite a, a powerful it's energy? Very and very strong. They yeah. kind of feed off, feed of off that and use it to yes. be able to communicate? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. need energy to yeah. feed off yeah. to actually help them come through as well. And the laughter is the best for them. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So it's better to, to have a, not to be kind of scared because mm -hmm. you're almost you're shrinking your energy. But if you're a little happier, you can. You um, are, and yeah. the more scared that you are, the more you draw in negative yeah. energy. Yes, yeah. Because they feed they're off, they're off the negative energy. Yeah. Yes. Put my teeth in the negative energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, I'll try and make it a little bit um, quicker. I've got quite a few, but there's one thing that uh, I've seen a lot. Um, and um, when it comes to the paranormal um, is Ouija boards um, and the fact that lots of people like to use it and then then suddenly um, come undone. So what's your um, what's your your opinion on on those? Um, do you do you find that people have played with them and then go, oh quick, come on help us? Yes, yes. So, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You don't know what energies you're working mm. with. You're opening up a lot of the lower force energy. Mm. Uh, a lot of people don't know what they're doing with them either. Because I mean, you can buy them anyway. You can buy them. Well, you can buy them in toy stores. Yeah. Can, yeah. Um, which yeah. I find a little bit yeah. disconcerting when they. You can actually buy them in small cart. The shop called Smoke Hut. Oh, okay. They're actually in the window in Rockingham Shop Centre, just now. Mm. But they've made, they've glorified them because they've actually painted like angels and stuff on them. Right. And to mm. me, no. that's just me personally. I, I don't, I don't like them. Everybody's entitled to do what they do. We're not here to change anybody's beliefs or we've, anything. Yeah, we've seen but other people use them, but we them. tend to walk away yeah. at that mm. point. And yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, we've been in investigations with other teams where they actually use one. Mm. And 
like tell you, yeah, like tight said, the ox can just take yeah. ourselves out yeah. of that room because. Yeah, oh, well, if you're not, that. it's kind of like driving a car yeah. in, in my respect is that if you don't know what you're doing, then you're going to crash. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, you yeah. can put up better, yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, okay, you've explained some of the equipment you use. Um, where would you consider the most haunted place in WA? Well, that's Western Australia for um, my uh, overseas comrades. Um, <laughs> To be honest, everybody says that. Where do you think the most? We were actually talking about this earlier on, and I said it's. I think it's an experience thing because what I could class as being the most haunted place, say, I don't know, Fremont Art Centre, for instance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I could go there and not have anything happen, mm -hmm. but yet somebody under the team could. Oh, it's off the scale, mm -hmm. and I think it's very based on the energy that you create, and also it is definitely definitely what you actually experience. So. I mean, you go on the internet and type in the most mm. haunted places in Western yeah. Australia and you'll get the top 10, mm. without a doubt. Mm. Like I said, I think it's an experience thing. Mm. I mean, we can't guarantee when we go on investigation that something's going to happen every single time. No, yeah. no. It's not like you see on TV when they go out. And we can sit there you know, for hours. hours and not we can sit for nothing. hours in the freezing cold, cold. and get absolutely nothing. nothing. Oh, it's not like the reality TV. Yeah. Well, it's it exactly is not. That's what a lot of people think it's like. And even going through the video footage and audio, we can spend days doing that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no guarantee that we're going to get anything on it. Yeah. But it doesn't put us off because yeah. we know there's definitely something out there. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just the passion that drives you to do it as well. It, it is. And when you do get and something, like, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> you're like me in a sweet shop. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So you're um, on Facebook. So we are. Yes. yes. So I'll put a link down below for the Facebook link, so we can touch yes. ourselves. Yeah. Um, definitely. If anyone um, wants to private message us, yeah. yeah. Definitely. We get back to everybody yeah. as soon yeah. as possible. So you don't actually have a website that you do. We don't. Just the TNT Paranormal uh, Investigators page. Cool. Yeah. And you'll see videos from their past work. And yeah, and, and we just like people to. We don't tell people what to what see. To we like yep. the people to watch it and yeah. drop down a comment and say, because yeah. sometimes we can put more people can go, oh, did you see this? And you go no, back and you go, it. oh, yeah. we missed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. You should always have a fresh set of eyes. And we just let other people make up their mind mm. what they think. Mm. Oh, that's you know? amazing. That's, that's yeah. what it is, you know. Yeah. So that's good. Oh, excellent. Well, thank you so much that's for right. making yeah. your brains a little bit. And um, I'll be uh, hunting some ghosts in a little while, so I'm excited. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you a little bit soon. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Send that beautiful energy up into the heavens. It's another very powerful cleansing incense that's often used by witches is dragon's blood. Dragon's blood, when it goes onto the chart,